Yeah, um, first of all, let's talk about today because it's a, a big day for some of your young players, isn't it, in the FA Youth Cup, a, a chance to test themselves against a higher team and a, and a bit of pressure as well. Yeah, there is, and to be fair, they, they, they passed the test so far in the previous round against Preston. Uh, Preston are normally renowned for having pretty decent youth set up and to go to, to deep down and play as well as they did and, and come through, that was good. So it's an exciting game for them. Um, tonight and uh, like you say coming up against a you know a well-established club <coughs> um, it's always good I suppose to get that opportunity to play at the stadium your home game um, and yeah I think they're full of confidence to be fair to you um, obviously you know with the likes of sort of Sean and, and Sam being able to sort of drop down into it gives them that little bit of experience as well. Uh, and yeah, like you said, how far, how much development do you feel has gone on in that youth setup? Because obviously, it's part of the, the club's overall plan. Do you feel that <laughs> things are improving? You're getting a better quality of player that maybe at some stage might force their way into the first team. Yeah, I mean, I think that will be some 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 way down the line. It, it, it's not easy, you know, uh, sort of blooding and bringing your own players through. It doesn't doesn't just happen overnight, just like that. There's a process that has to be that has to happen, and um, style of play is a big one in terms of trying to replicate what we try to do at the first team level and then there's a period of time that you have to suffer uh, and I use that word quite a lot lately and it'd be the same with the first team at the minute with our young players sometimes you have to suffer for a while before you reap the benefits and um, you know it might not be sort of next season where we see you know the, the rewards but it might be the season after that and then what the key is to, to continue to make sure that you're producing players year on year once you get to that level of performance that, that obviously you know they can cope with better playing in the first team. I guess returning to the first team now, the message for a lot of the players this week has been more performance like we saw on Tuesday and uh, perhaps a bit more luck as well. Yeah, and, and listen, um, you know me by now, like, you know, I say it how it is and I don't shy away from stuff. You know, you produce your own luck, you do. Um, you know, and we looked at the performance again yesterday. We sat down as a group. We were on it. It's difficult to say when you've lost the game 3 0, but we were outstanding on Tuesday night when you absolutely everything up until sort of putting the ball in the goal. I know their keeper only made a couple of saves on the night, but what did happen? It was about seven, maybe eight, nine blocks in front of the goal that made the keeper not have to do his job properly. That, to be fair to Gillingham, they defended for their lives and defended really well. Um, but I think if you put in them type of performances on a regular basis, you'll end up getting the results that you want. And, you know, we might have got away with uh, a couple of potential goals previously early on in the season um, that have maybe a shot gone wide or Alex making a save. And you don't really think about it, don't look back at it because you've won the game and it can sort of um, pave over the cracks, but certainly helps and makes your, your judgment of a performance a little bit more clearer. Whereas, it's a great opportunity when you go through a little bit of a spell that we are at the minute where you get absolute clarity and you can see really, really clear what you need to do to improve to get that, to get that result. Any reaction with the, the players coming back from injury? Obviously, particularly Liam Bridcut, does he look OK having played that hour? Yeah, he does. And I think it was sensible to do what we, what we did and we had to do it. It would have been quite tempting to keep him on the pitch because I can assure you, even at 2-0 down in the dressing room at half-time, there was a real belief that we could still win the game, never mind draw the game. There was a genuine, genuine belief that we could win the game because we thought we were playing, playing well and creating chances. So to bring him off at that time, I think it's turned out to be quite sensible. Uh, he's available for tomorrow. Adam Jackson and Lewis Montsma, um, they, was, they were struggling a little bit yesterday. They didn't train. Uh, I'm hoping and praying. <laughs> At the same time that they're okay today and available for tomorrow, because if not, uh, yeah, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Um, I suppose the only other one is is Tom Hopper, which isn't um, particularly good news. Um, he had his scan last night, um, and it's going to be a six to eight week job, so probably looks like his season's done. Well, that's a that's a real blow, isn't it? Because he's been fantastic for you this season. <laughs> Yeah, it's just another one in it. You know, it's one of them where you've got to try and sort of stay quite calm and um, to lose uh, the likes of George and, and Tom in the space of a few weeks uh, going into obviously a crunch time of the season isn't helpful. Um, 
But yeah, he's part and parcel of the job and you know, it's about dealing with it, moving on and, and, and trying to trying to give the responsibility to some of the players to try and take that take that shirt and and, and use it to the best it possibly can. Um, you, you talked about the two centre halves being injured. Does that mean someone like Sean Rowan, who we'd expect to be involved in the youth game tonight, might have to have a change of plan? No, no, we've got we've got enough to sort of deal with that. Um, obviously, we've got uh, TJ and, and Regan, who you know, if if one of them's needed to play centre half, they can do. Um, and you know, listen, worst case scenario, we obviously we've got. Um, We've got Liam Bridcutt, who's more than capable and has played lots and lots of games, believe it or not, as a centre half. So, um, Sean's waiting for this opportunity with the, the, the young players tonight, and he'll get this opportunity. Um, can I just ask about TJ? A lot of people asking me about it because they haven't, because apart from Ipswich away, hasn't been featuring too much of late. Has he got an injury problem that you're sort of nursing through, or is it more selection? No, it is more selection, and to be fair, up until the point where we I started to sort of chop and change a little bit. He played almost every minute of every game um, and we just felt that he was looking a little bit weary, a little bit tired. His numbers back that up, you know, in terms of his high speed running, his distances, you know, they were, they were dropping and dropping and dropping and um, yeah, we just felt that we, he needed a little bit of a break and come out of it. Um, and, and to be fair, we have to evolve as a club as well because, you know, ultimately, um, you have to give the opposition different things to think about. And between TJ and Regan, they've both got different strengths and weaknesses. And um, yeah, it's sort of trying to pick the, the right one for each game. Uh, Sunderland, it's fair to say, are on a, a great run at the moment. But I guess all good runs have to come to an end at some stage. Absolutely. That was a message yesterday, I can assure you. Um, they're obviously a good side. They've got a lot of experienced players in the team. Um, you know, very pragmatic how, how they approach it. Obviously, they've got the the, the, the excellence of uh, Charlie Wyke up top in terms of bringing people into play and obviously very dangerous when the ball's in wide areas but um, yeah we, we, we feel we've got the, the game to, to win the game uh, but you know ultimately we have to defend and moments in games have to be a little bit better than they were the other night. And then she mentioned White because I was I've watched a lot of Sunderland games of late, and as you said, pragmatism, maybe a, a degree of simplicity about the football. It's get a, a ball from out wide into him, and he causes problems. So easy for me to say, I may be harder to deal with at times. It is difficult because if you look at the semi final, um, there was probably maybe sort of three occasions where <clears throat> your heart was in your mouth a little bit when the ball came in from wide areas. And, Two out of the three occasions, I thought the players defended it brilliantly between Adam and Lewis. Um, they dealt with it really, really well. And then that one lapse in concentration, switching off, Charlie had the, you know, the ability to sort of check and then make another run and, and free himself. And obviously, that was the equaliser and uh, obviously the game went into penalties from there. So we can't afford to switch off at any point. Once that ball goes into wide areas with McGeady and Gooch, whoever it may be at the time, Jones, uh, although Jones is injured now, but yeah, um, it, we just have to make sure that, that we deal with him and we mark him. And then just very briefly, Michael, looking ahead a, a week, um, the Oxford game, does that look like that's going to take place now? Because it was, obviously, there was a, a maybe a hope that some of the international call-ups might push it back a bit. Does it look like it will happen now? Probably not, no. I mean, um, obviously, Brennan will be called up and called up for the Welsh squad. Um, the, the, the ones that we were waiting on uh, with Sean, uh, potentially Scully and, and potentially Morgan Rogers, but um, as it is at this moment in time, I, I think that the game looks likely to be uh, to go ahead.